Hello guys, welcome from the main street of Tirana. Our first day. My girlfriend Thomas and his girlfriend. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so this is our first day in Tirana and we are starting the trip on the main street of the capital of Albania and we many bunkers on the way, lots of history. So stay tuned and enjoy Albania. Monday morning. It's rather busy for Monday. Lots of people, lots of cars. <laughs> the traffic is insane. It's super fun. Everyone is just going, you know, as fast as possible, you know, beeping. Uh, lots of action going on. Also, you can see right behind me, you know, I see that there are lots of men actually selling things on the street. And uh, some of them are quite random or unusual. So, for example, there is a scale you can weigh yourself. Uh, for, an, for a certain amount. Uh, yeah, looking at the people here, just the dress code, you know, lots of dark uh, faces look a bit actually, I wouldn't say rude, but they, like, they are very straightforward, it's intense, and they look at you, they kind of stare. Uh, maybe it's because I'm just walking here with my, with my camera and just talking to myself or, to, or just talking to you guys. I noticed those looks, but uh, I think people are just curious, you know. Who are you? Why are we speaking English? You know, what, what are you doing here? So far, it feels safe. It's, 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 it, you know, the country is, 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 life is going here. You know, many things are happening. So now, let's have some coffee and uh, most likely espresso because of the, well, historically, Albania was under the control of Italy uh, for, 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 for also decades. Uh, therefore, the coffee that they have is most often Italian. Lithuanian chocolate. Espresso, sugar, everything. Welcome to Albania. Yeah, the espresso they make is uh, it is double espresso, but that's still with water for sure. But way too much liquid, but nice. Nice. Enjoy. Thank you. We came to one of the bunkers in Albania. We have 750,000 bunkers in one country, which is smaller than 30,000 square meters, square kilometers. And uh, meanwhile, we are uh, able to see the history of life after the Second World War and uh, learn how people actually tried escaping the country. Since 1944 to 1990, uh, before the collapse of the communist regime here, uh, 10,000 people uh, successfully escaped, but 1,000 people died, and many of them were also captured. And the, the main reason why people wanted to, to, to escape because they didn't agree with the values of communism regime. The life quality was super low, they didn't have a job, uh, they couldn't take care of themselves, uh, everything, all the borders were closed, so you couldn't travel, no people could come, no people could leave. People never lived here an easy life, it was always, uh, always a struggle, always going through uncertainty. Now of course Albania is changing, but for the past 600 years the country was occupied by, by one or another country. The enemy of Hoxha, uh, he was really paranoid about uh, people actually finding the way to escape the country, finding the way to unite and uh, protest against the regime, which is for sure not uh, beneficial for them. Uh, therefore, many, many people were executed. So some were executed due to political reasons, while others were executed or imprisoned, put in prison 
because of their what they would call misinformation or actually the real information about what's going on in the country how people feel so many people were actually spied people's police uh, gendarmer uh, in albania would actually go into apartments of uh, people who could potentially uh, be a threat to the country's regime and they would hide bugs in, in the most random place for example here in the broom they would hide it right at the back this microphone which i mean you would never spot right here you see you would never spot it i mean even if you if you knew that would be hard at all uh, some people would actually work as spies and they would uh, provoke people to say something against the regime and uh, those spies would wear microphones attached to their body well they look rather massive I don't expect your good friend to be a spy you might actually tell things that you shouldn't be telling in the, under the socialist regime political officers actually stayed in this bunker uh, but all those times were just fake alarm uh, there wasn't real danger to them however as, as, I, as I told you they were really paranoid about this, the situation in the country and they thought that at any time they can be attacked because they knew they're doing the wrong thing but the first time uh, when they stayed in this bunker was 1991 after people uh, destroyed off one of the Enver Hoja's uh, statues in the street uh, the second time in September 1998 during the rebellion that followed the assassination of uh, opposition's political the last time 1999 when as a result of NATO bombing of Belgrade to free Kosovo from uh, Serbian occupation they also thought that there might be attack on Albania but uh, now it's interesting that Kosovo is actually an independent uh, country or seen as an independent country but however Serbia still disagrees with that and this is this potentially could be one of the explanations why Serbia is now much more supportive of uh, Russia than uh, NATO or any other Western society. So simply belonging on the historical facts, which is a bit sad, uh, especially given the situation that we have now in 2022. So this was the first experience of visiting a bunker in Albania. We expect to see a ton of bunkers here in the country. Uh, many of them are of course abandoned and not used. The last dictator in Albania was Henver Hoxha. In 1988 he built himself a museum which was supposed to represent and be a constant reminder of regime in the country for every single Albanian. After 1980s Henver Hoxha realized that he is losing power. Albania has, left, has been left without any allies. Soviet Union didn't want to partner with Albania therefore enemies. China started to create a better relationship with the United States, therefore enemies. Italy, in the past, uh, together with uh, Greece and Ottoman Empire, have also occupied Albanian territory. Enemies. So Albania was left alone. Enver Hoxha realized that, that he is at risk. At risk of uh, running a country without any allies, at risk of people living in fear and at the end of the day getting all together and going out on the streets and protesting and actually taking him down as a dictator. So he had an idea to unite all the people against the rest of the world and he needed a constant reminder because he was feared uh, of uh, losing power and being attacked by any of the world country uh, they chose to build a lot of bunkers. When I say a lot, as you already know, 750,000 bunkers all over Albania. They were all not only a place 
to for, for people to protect themselves during the war and respond with the weapons uh, through the cycloptic eye but also bunkers had a greater function than defense it was a constant reminder for people in what environment they live in they are at risk therefore they have to be united together with the dictator the dictator who chose to protect them who chose to build bunkers who chose to offer a shelter of safety for every single Albanian in the country uh, when you live in an environment where all around the city you see bunkers you understand that you are in, in, in danger therefore you have you, you cannot make a random and unexpected decision you have to be intact with the policies and the rules within the country and uh, how else would you live and every day you walk in the city center and you see the cycloptic eye staring at you being a reminder for you that you are in danger so the problem is that nobody actually wanted Albania Albania is in southeast of Europe at the very corner of Europe it doesn't have any resource that it could offer people unfortunately were not educated they were not skilled workers or anything like that so therefore Nobody really wanted Albania. However, building those bunkers exhausted the country's economy even more. Obviously, it was expensive to build and they were actually never used. So, was it a bad idea? Well, at that time, yes. Today, this is the reason why people come to Albania. Uh, one of the reasons, I, I, I should say. They come to explore the nature and beautiful valleys and, and Albanian mountains. But uh, the truth of the matter is that people want to learn the history. People want to uh, connect with the history and understand the, how it really looked like back in the day. So then, you know, from today's perspective, those bunkers would be destroyed because now uh, it's difficult to, 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 to build houses uh, or, you know, roads. You have to work around them. However, the purpose of a bunker is that it doesn't get destroyed right so they're just here I'm just at the park right now next to the main street uh, big, big houses are next to me as well so the thing is that even though they were never used this is a great tourist attraction and today people come here to see to see those bunkers to learn more about those bunkers to learn more about the history of the country and this in partially why we are here and uh, it's very interesting to, 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 to read to read about it, to, to learn about it. It's great for me to share it. And uh, I think nowadays it's even more important to learn the history and learn all the horrible things that happened so that we make sure that this doesn't happen again. So this was Tirana. So lots of historical value here. A beautiful city, uh, beautiful people. Yeah, so it's been a great experience. Uh, we have to keep going because we're going, we're we are, we are cycling. <laughs> we are driving every single day. We're moving, we're going all around the country. So now we're going to Apollonia and then to Berat. So now Apollonia, let's go. Yeah, so we have just arrived to Berat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so now we're just gonna visit Berat real quick. Nothing, nothing special. Not, not really much to see. Just quick dinner, get some food. Maybe we're gonna cook something for dinner in Airbnb. And uh, tomorrow we will explore the city properly, just like we did with Tirana. So feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel and. Uh, you know, see all the other videos coming up. Share, like, subscribe. Share, like, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next one. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye, bye my friends. <laughs> uh, what do you have? Do you like fresh juice? Do you like uh, beer from Albania? Okay. You can choose. 
Stella, it's not, not Stella, Stella is from Belgium, Stella is Albania, Tirana, Concha. Third snacks arrived. The price is actually quite good. So we got burek. And burek is one of the traditional foods in Balkans. So this one is with cheese. And then we got one with spinach as well. Beautiful. <laughs> so 120, 150 leg. So this is approximately one euro fifty. Actually a bit less. And we got some wine from Albania as well. Uh, a bottle of wine costs 10 euros, ranges from 10 to 16. Yeah, and then now waiting for the main dish. This is beef stew. This is moussaka. Moussaka. With eggplant, some meat, mashed potatoes. Greek. Greek. Something. America. Italiano. Italiano. <laughs> Cheers. Coco! <laughs>